can I say? Just want to really thank Kellbrook a lot for you know for taking the fight. As Abel said, uh, we think he could have beaten a lot of well a lot of middleweights tonight, just not Gennady. Um, our understanding is he fractured his orbital socket with one of the punches that Gennady had thrown, and and so we think it was a wise decision. He stopped the fight because Kell certainly has many more championship fights in his career, regardless of which weight he decides to fight at. I want to thank Eddie Hearn for being such a gracious host. It couldn't have gone smoother from the negotiations. As we said, it was signed literally in two days, and ever since then, we took the boxing world by surprise and reached a, a fevered pitch. If you looked on Twitter tonight, Eddie's the king of Twitter, but it was, it was out of the uh, top 10 categories, there was probably four related to, to the fight. So it was a great promotion. Um, you see, uh, when two undefeated champions and fighters of that caliber fight each other, you see how the fans respond. So we really want to take our hats off to Eddie and his whole staff at Matchroom and thank all the, the fans that showed up to the O2, all the, the countries, all the TV stations that televised around the world, over 100 countries, especially HBO. Uh, RTL in Germany and, and actually uh, Sky in the UK. It was uh, just a tremendous effort promotionally from from the uh, from all the media. Eddie, you want to say a few words? Uh, no, just thank thanks Tom and uh, Gennady, especially in Abel, um, and all, all of the team and Oleg, of course, with Max. Uh, you know, I felt like it was a great fight, a great occasion. I hope Gennady enjoyed the atmosphere, uh, the walk-ons, the energy of uh, British fights. Um, very proud of Kel, thought he put up a great fight. Um, I thought that uh, although the crowd always want to see a duel to the end, uh, I thought Dominic Ingle did a great job. Uh, he's gone to hospital, I think he's broken his, his eye socket, but he's okay. Um, and you know, I think Kel has a huge future in the sport of boxing. You know, I think if he was a middleweight stepping up to fight Gennady Golovkin, then I think uh, you know, the, the effort would have been great, but the fact that he came up, you know, 13 pounds to take on Gennady Golovkin, I think says a lot about Kelbrook, and uh, I think he's proved he has a good chin Absolutely. as well, because uh, yeah. although Gennady hurt him in the first round, the second round was epic, and the third round was just as good, and the fourth round was unbelievable, and uh, I wish we could have had a few more rounds, but um, thank you all for making this a huge event, and I'm sure you've got questions for Abel and uh, Gennady. Abel, that's on. I don't really know how those rumors came out. Um, it was, I think it was because the uh, media wanted to do some interviews after the press conference. Gennady had gone home to the hotel and they thought he wasn't feeling well. And so I think that's, it just kind of like snowballed from there. So, um, you know, Gennady's a professional, Abel will tell you, he's done this so many times, both as an amateur and now as a professional that it doesn't matter where he fights, as long as uh, we can put some in the ring with him. And again, we have to take our hats off to Kel Brook because the way Kel fought, as Eddie mentioned, that second round was epic. It just uh, it was a tremendous round, uh, the way they were you know, just going back and forth and how Kel was able to land some shots on, on Gennady. And you know, Abel can tell you some more about um, you know, just being here in London and, and the, the final week of preparation for the fight. I think after the press conference, he, he did some interviews and then uh they took him back to the hotel on, on the weigh-in day. It took us an hour and 40 minutes to get to, uh, to the weigh-in from the hotel. And it was stop and go, stop and go through, through city traffic. And I think it, uh, it pissed him off a little bit. And he was at the point now where he just wants to fight. I think Paul did an interview, Paul Mounaji did an interview, understanding from a fighter's perspective what it's like to be uh, trying to make weight uh, and then to have that, uh, that ride and that uh, Long wait. Uh, he just wanted to go back to the hotel and and, uh, and do his thing. No, I, I don't feel power. I don't. I feel very good speed, Kel speed, and distance. You know, Kel, he's very good fighter. You know, after second round, after first round, I feel I'm stronger a little bit. You know, after second round, I want like not boxing. You know, I'm like crazy. You know, like uh, I want like street fight. I promise bring dramatic show and I won't broke him, you know, because I believe, I feel he's very good fighter and he's not strong, not, he's not middleweight division. 
No, okay, maybe he's strong, he looks good, he looks strong. Not first fight, you know, he needs time. And respect Kel, his team, thank you very much for promotions, Eddie. You know, just amazing atmosphere. Today I'm very enjoying. No. No, it was a little bit for me, he punched me, just... And I know I... Too much punches, you know, just... I don't feel power. I said, just come on, come on, come on, come on. Just come on more, you know, I want more. Like, Good you know, just I'm crazy. Does Kel rank among your toughest opponents? Is he one of the toughest oh my goodness. He's champion. Seriously, Kel, he is a good fighter and he is undefeated. You know, like different, different power, different size, and I feel this. You know, maybe sometimes, like okay, Stevens or Lemieux, he is, has more power, not same class boxing IQ, and Kel, he is a good fighter. You know, and I don't feel is. Right now it's different, you know. He's more boxers, I want more street fight. Were you surprised when he threw it out? I think this is smart. Respect his corner, you know, respect his corner, his coach, because you know, seriously, last round he feels very bad. He can't breathe, he can't move and he's finished. I I think this is smart. Respect his score. Tom, was there a moment when you were worried when uh, Brooks started to fight back? You know, I was worried that they weren't going to stop him. I say he gets seriously hurt uh, in the last round, the last 20 seconds when the guy didn't see the towel wave. And if you go back and look at the tape, he got caught with probably eight, nine clean punches. They may not have been devastating punches, but those are the kind of punches that hurt you, that, uh, that hurt you permanently. So, uh, that's what I was worried about. I was worried that they were going to be too brave. Kel was a warrior and a brave warrior. Uh, he's not going to give up. We have to be smart in the corner. We have to be smarter. We, uh, we can't let the 20,000 coaches in the audience dictate what happens to our fighters. Uh, and Don did the right thing. Gennady, who do you want to fight next? What's your Just come to. <laughs> no, I'm open for everybody. My goal is all the belts in the middle of division. I want unification fight. Like Billy Joe Sanders, you know. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I love it. I love it. The atmosphere. I love it. Huge fan in London. Absolutely. We tried to. I mean, we tried to make that fight here in the UK before we even had discussions with Eddie, and didn't go very far. So hopefully, when Billy Joe Eddie sees the reaction that he's gotten here in the UK, and that, from what I understand, the uh, Sky Box Office did very well tonight. Then uh, you know maybe uh, he'll have more courage or. Maybe not courage, but more incentive, I guess is the better word. More incentive to uh, to actually get in the ring. But you never know. Like Gennady says, he's open to fight anyone. And whoever is uh, whoever's out there, Gennady always makes a, a great fight. We understand the WBA um, is going to order the mandatory with Jacobs. Jacobs just fought on Saturday. So that would be uh, that would be a great fight. We have a lot of respect for Denny Jacobs. Um, and hopefully we can make that fight. First of all, Bill just Andres. Or Canelo. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Seriously. What about if there is no one in Lithuania? Do you want to I have a dream. I have a dream. My goal is all the belts in the middle of the division. After, yes. Seriously. Yeah, I, I can answer that uh, <coughs> from a promotional standpoint. If we can't get the unification fight, if we can't get another top name, and I told Eddie, you know, we, the James DeGale fight would be, it would be a great fight over here. We tried to make mm -hmm. Carl Frotch fight a while ago. That would be a great fight. I keep He's telling him, bring Carl in the locker room to congratulate him. <laughs> no, Carl, was, Carl was on, uh, on, you know, commentating at Sky. And, um, you know, there's, uh, Ramirez is undefeated. He's the WBO champion at uh, 168 pounds. So those are all great fights. Naturally, his focus is on the middleweight division. If we can't make... Mm -hmm. Unification fight, if it can't make a great fight of middleweight and one of the super middleweights decide to fight him, 
I mean, look, Andre, Moore, Andre Ward moved out of the super weight, middleweight division because there weren't any big fights for him. So he's fighting now Kovala. So if he moved out, you know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, you know, big fights for him there. Although I know a lot of people want to see him tested against bigger fighters. Um, and if the opportunity presents itself, if it's a big fight like tonight's promotion, certainly that's something that we would uh, definitely uh, put together. According to Gennady, he wants to fight as soon as possible. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll start the negotiations with Jacobs and see how far we get. Just because the WBA orders it doesn't mean he's going to take the fight. Doesn't mean we can make the fight. Um, the WBC mandated Canelo. So, you know, just because he's had has mandatory obligations or in a mandatory position doesn't mean we can actually make the fight. So we'll see how that progresses. And if, if that doesn't go, uh, if we can't make that fight, then certainly, like he said, uh, you know, a unification fight would be, uh, would be at the top of the list. I hope, hopefully, in the future, maybe after today, he's ready. You know, I hope, seriously. I won this fight. Just go back to your question when you said uh, were we nervous when he was getting uh, getting hit. I was sitting next to Eddie, and uh, Eddie was getting excited when he was getting hit. <laughs> For me, as a promoter, naturally, Abel is much more uh, calm and collected in the corner. You know, but uh, Kel Brook was hitting him clean. He was hitting him with uppercuts. He was hitting him with a lot of different, a, bit. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of combinations. And and for me, it's never great uh, to see him get hit clean like that. But at the same time, I'm sure a lot of fighters saw that and said, "Well, if Kel Brook can do it, maybe I can do it." And and maybe that'll give him some courage now to to actually sign a contract. So um, it's a double-edged sword. Um, if Gennady is so dominant, nobody wants to fight him. It just makes it even more impossible to make a fight. So, it's uh, it's de it's definitely a two-way street. Gennady at 34, have we seen the best of you yet, or are you still improving? Everyday experience. Everyday experience. Today, <clears throat> respect Kel. He's a huge fighter. No, just this is my experience today. Okay, this is not a perfect fight for me. Like sparring. I want more. Oh, this is very serious business. This is boxing. No, twelve what have twelve rounds. No, I know. I know my style. I know my power. Thanks my coach Abel Sanchez, you know, just this is profit style. It's all from. Michelle? Um, Johnny, how would you rate Kelbrook's power? 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 How would you like street fight, it doesn't matter, you know, just I want, I show him, just come on, come on, come on, more, beat me, like, you know, just, <laughs> come on, let's go, let's do it. And but did any of the punches sting at all? Any of the punches you understand? I forgot. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, mean, no, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's boxing, Michelle. Of course, he beat me every round. <laughs> No, we had the same problem at 147 pounds that Gennady yeah. has at 160 pounds. Honestly, no one wanted to fight him. It, you know, it's either pay us, you know, small name fighters pay us you know, millions of dollars to come. That's why we had to pay a big name fighter to come, because at least we know it's good business. Mm -hmm. You know, at welterweight, you look at the division, who is good business? Furman, he's, you know, Porter, who already, Kel's already beaten him. Danny Garcia doesn't want to move. That Adrian Broner's in prison. Like, what, you know, so, and then you look at light middleweight, you've got Canelo's fighting Liam Smith, you know, Canelo's running from him. I mean, it's like not being funny. It's none of my business, but as a fan, I want to see Gennady Golovkin against Canelo. It's the, it's the biggest fight in world boxing. 
how can you ignore that fight and, do, and, and vacate your belt? You know, but anyway, that's another story. That's for them to worry about. <laughs> but, but, but for Kel, like, uh, no, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a very, very bold move. And Abel's right. You know, it was a great line I'm going to use myself. You can't let 20,000 people you know, work a corner because Dominic Ingle's going to get a lot of criticism. But you know, Kel's, Kel's in hospital now. You know, he's, he could be out for a couple of months. But you know, Peter Nelson's already come up to me and said, you know, we need to talk about Kel Brook. And that was part of the plan. It was to broaden the, the brand of Kel Brook internationally. We always knew he was good enough to compete with Gennady Golovkin. We hoped he'd win. But whatever happened, we knew he would compete, and he did compete. So actually, I think it was a very smart move. But thank you.